Hello everyone, I'm back with part 2 of thyroid gland and its disorders. In this lecture, we are going to discuss hypothyroidism. But before I start, I would like to request you to please watch the first part of this lecture before proceeding further. You can find it on my Instagram page and YouTube channel. The link to my YouTube channel is in the bio of my Instagram page. So let's begin with the causes of primary hypothyroidism. What does primary hypothyroidism mean? Primary means that the problem is in the thyroid gland and hypothyroidism means underactive thyroid gland. The most common cause of primary hypothyroidism is autoimmune thyroiditis, which is of two types, Hashimoto's thyroiditis and atrophic thyroiditis. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is more common than atrophic thyroiditis. Now, what do I mean by autoimmune thyroiditis? Normally, God has made an immune system in our body which forms antibodies that fight against foreign pathogens like bacteria and viruses. But sometimes, unfortunately, the immune system forms autoantibodies that attack the body's own tissue. For example, in autoimmune thyroiditis, the autoantibodies are formed against the body's own thyroid gland. So the thyroid gland will get inflamed. Hashimoto's thyroiditis can be differentiated from atrophic thyroiditis by the presence of anti-TPO antibodies and a non-tender goiter. In Hashimoto's, anti-TPO antibodies are positive and there is painless swelling of the thyroid. In atrophic thyroiditis, there are non-specific antibodies and there will be no goiter because the gland has undergone atrophy. That means it has shrunken. The second cause is iodine deficiency. We all know that iodine is required for the synthesis of thyroid hormones, so its deficiency may lead to hypothyroidism. It is uh, seen in people who live in mountainous regions where food is grown in iodine poor soil. The third cause is iatrogenic, that is after a medical treatment like post-surgery of thyroid gland or radioactive iodine treatment or after some drugs like lithium amidrone and carbamazole. And finally, congenital agenesis, which means that there is failure of thyroid gland to develop during the embryonic growth. In the textbooks, you will come across um, secondary hypothyroidism and tertiary hypothyroidism, but they are very rare in clinical practice. Secondary hypothyroidism is due to failure of pituitary gland to secrete TSH due to a pituitary tumor, and tertiary hypothyroidism is due to failure of hypothalamus to secrete TRH due to some hypothalamic lesion. Now we are going to focus on Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is the most common cause of primary hypothyroidism. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is named after a Japanese physician, Dr. Hakaru Hashimoto, who discovered it in 1912. It is uh, found in 5% of general population and it is more common in women than men and it is also known as chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis. It is associated with other autoimmune disorders like type 1 diabetes, Addison's disease and celiac disease. So you should screen patients for hypothyroidism in these conditions. Also people with Down syndrome and Turner syndrome are prone to get Hashimoto's thyroiditis and very rarely, lymphoma of the thyroid gland is also associated with Hashimoto's. Now, I hope you remember the uh, general overview of the pathophysiology that we have discussed in um, part one of this lecture. So very quickly, I'll go through it in this slide. What happens in Hashimoto's thyroiditis is that there are autoantibodies which are formed against TPO, which is thyroid peroxidase enzyme. This enzyme is required for the synthesis of T4 and T3. So when anti-TPO antibodies are formed, which are also called antimicrosomal antibodies, they attack the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland becomes inflamed. There is lymphocytic infiltration in the thyroid gland. And these follicles in the thyroid gland, they become atrophied over time. So now the thyroid gland will be unable to produce T4 and T3. So their levels will be low. 
these low levels of thyroid hormones will report back to pituitary gland and the pituitary gland will produce more TSH trying to compensate the lower levels of T4 and T3. There are many functions of thyroid hormones on our body which we have already discussed in the previous lecture. So how does hypothyroidism affect our body? The patient will complain of memory impairment, forgetfulness and uh, they'll not be very attentive. They'll have dry skin and brittle hair. They'll have hypothermia due to which they'll have uh, cold intolerance. This hypothermia also leads to fluid retention in the body. So you'll find they'll have puffy eyes and pitting edema. You can examine the goiter, the enlargement of the thyroid gland. Also, they'll complain of uh, muscle weakness, aches and pains here and there, and generalized fatigue. Their heart rate will slow down. There'll be constipation, and due to decreased BMR, they'll gain weight eventually. In females, it controls the menstrual cycle, so they will present with heavy menstrual bleeding. To diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis, we'll check the thyroid function tests. T4 and T3 levels will be lower than normal and TSH will be higher than normal. Anti-TPO antibodies can be checked, although routinely uh, they're not tested, but if you check them, they'll be positive in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In ladies who have menorrhagia, they'll present with anemia. Also, um, there'll be hyperlipidemia and hyperglycemia because thyroid hormones are responsible for fat metabolism and carbohydrate metabolism. And that's reduced in hypothyroidism. Imaging of the thyroid gland is of little use in hypothyroidism. Some physicians, however, do ultrasound of the neck to see if there are any nodules or any infiltrative disease of the thyroid gland. If you do ultrasound of the neck in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it uh, shows a diffusely heterogeneous image. Now, what does homogeneous image or heterogeneous image mean? If you see this image, this is the normal ultrasound of the thyroid gland. This is the thi right lobe, this is the left lobe, the isthmus connecting the two, and the black area is air, which is in the trachea. In this image, the texture of the thyroid gland looks very smooth and alike. This is what we call as homogeneous appearance. On the other hand, in the second image, which is uh, the Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you can appreciate that the texture doesn't seem very smooth. It looks very irregular and broken. It's not alike, like a bumpy road. This is known as heterogeneous appearance. Treatment of Hashimoto's thyroiditis is very simple. We just give levothyroxine, which is basically a synthetic T4. It is a small tablet, one daily a patient has to take, 30 minutes before breakfast or any other medication, because they can interfere with its absorption. The dose ranges between 25 to 250 micrograms. It is um, generally given according to patient's weight. That is almost 1.6 to 1.7 microgram per kg. And the general clinical condition of a patient, for example, if a patient comes with severe hypothyroidism, then we can start directly from a higher dose and then try to treat it slowly until he becomes euthyroid. Also, patients who have heart failure, we should start with the lowest dose, that is 25 micrograms. You should check TFTs after 6 to 8 weeks until the patient becomes stable and then annually. Unfortunately, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a chronic thyroiditis, so levothyroxine should be given as a lifelong treatment. Surgery is not required in hypothyroidism unless the goiter becomes so large that it compresses the trachea, esophagus, um, and larynx, causing difficulty in breathing, difficulty in swallowing, and hoarseness of the voice, respectively. In pregnancy, thyroxine is completely safe. In fact, we have to increase the dose of thyroxine in pregnancy due to increased demand of the body. Serum TSH levels should be checked in each trimester and then six to eight weeks postpartum. Breastfeeding is also safe while the patient is on thyroxine. That's it, guys. I hope you liked the video, so please share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, then please follow me on my Instagram page. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Take care. God bless you all.